Did you always want to go to space? No, you know what? When I was a kid, I didn't see myself in science or space. Oh. We have to answer humanity's call to explore. Feminism is just another word for equality. Because you know your own value. Know your own value. I have an important question okay. that I've been asked so many times. Yes. Uranus or Uranus? I have asked scientists the same question. I, because I don't know. I am not an astronomer. And I, I was like, well, I would love to just say Uranus. Can we just decide on Uranus? But astronomers say it's both. They say it doesn't matter, it's both. What do you like to say? Uranus. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the other one. I got kids <laughs> watching. They're going to laugh at me. What were you like when you were my age? I would say I was very nervous as a kid. I always wanted to be one of the smart kids, but I never felt very smart. And so I think when I was your age, I was much more afraid of failure than I am today. If I could go back and talk to her, I would tell her that failure is not a bad thing. Failure means you are on the right path, you are learning, you are challenging yourself, and you're filling in those gaps of your knowledge that you didn't know before, but now you are working to know. Did you always want to go to space? No, you know what? When I was a kid, I didn't see myself in science or space. Oh. I didn't know any scientists or engineers growing up. And so it didn't seem like a normal thing for somebody like me to go to space. Um, what was your education like? Oh boy, so let's see. When I went to college, I studied mechanical and aerospace engineering. And then I went to MIT and I got two masters, one in aeronautics and astronautics, and one in technology and policy. What was your favorite place you've gotten to work? Um, space, probably. <laughs> that one was pretty epic. Um, but let's see, you know, other than that, I really enjoy when I film for my TV show. So I'm filming my show Exploration Outer Space, which has been on the air for the last 10 years. And I get to travel to all of the different NASA centers and private space companies and universities. For someone you would get this, like as someone who loves to learn, it's so great to talk to the top experts in the world and ask them any question you want. <laughs> You've gotten to fly on the Vomit Comet, NASA's Vomit Comet. Have you heard of this? I think I have one. I, I think you need to fly in this. I think you would love it. It's like an 8,000 foot roller coaster in the sky. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And it does this so that when you go over the hump and you start going back down, everybody, including usually science experiments, I did research on this plane, are free falling inside the plane and you're floating weightless for like 22 seconds. And then you start to go back up and you feel really heavy. You feel two Gs, twice your weight for 25 seconds. And so you feel weightless and heavy and weightless and heavy and weightless and heavy and weightless and heavy for an hour and a half, <laughs> wow. which is why they call it the Vomit Comet. And I've flown on it three times. I'm flying on it for my show for a fourth time in a few weeks. Yeah, that's a pretty cool experience. Sounds very nauseating. What kinds of obstacles have you had being a woman in STEM? Oh, it's funny because, Macy, I moved from a male-dominated field, which is engineering, to another male-dominated field, which is women in um, science television. So science television, the vast majority of shows online now are hosted, created by men. men. Exactly. And so it's a different challenge here trying to convince um, the bosses of these major networks that their audience would want to see females on TV talking about science. That's been really hard. And so I've learned, again, if, you, if we wanna create the representation in STEM, in media that we want, oftentimes we have to fund it ourselves, create it ourselves. And so for me, my latest big project was I took all the money I've made for my children's books and I invested in a production company and I made my own science TV show that I posted online on YouTube, Emily Science Lab. So that's been my next big project, trying to create that representation myself. So what influenced you to start writing kids' books? Question. Uh, so when I first started as a TV show host, I became the first woman in the United States to solo host a national science show. Wow. That had never been done before. And I didn't realize the impact that that would have, but 
people started writing in and saying not just that they were fans of the show, but they were grateful for the show because their daughter had never seen a female version of Bill Nye on their TV screen. And man, I, I started in this field because it felt like an adventure, it felt fun. But when we got those messages, it transformed the adventure into something more, into a mission with purpose because I was all of a sudden becoming the role model that I needed as a kid. And that started to become my North Star for everything that I did. And so I was like, man, I wanna create more of this magic. So I started writing science books with little girls as the main character. And that really became just part of the media that I was creating is just bringing representation to women in STEM in every area that I could find. I love how you're representing that. It always makes me upset when science and space related things mm. are labeled for boys. Yeah, thank you. It, it's funny, when kids are little, they both love space and rockets. And it's not a boy or a girl thing. It's just when you get older, sometimes these stereotypes start to seep in and it feels like you don't belong in these fields. So I love what you're doing because I think you're showing all of these kids who might be watching that they do belong in this. Thank you. How did you get to working on going to space? Yeah, well, I have been working in the aerospace industry for two decades and I've known Blue Origin for a long time. And so last year, they reached out and said, there's a spot open if you want it. And so for me, someone like me, mm -hmm. who's not a yet a billionaire, uh, for me to do that, I needed to find 20 to 30 partners to help me sponsor the seat. Mm -hmm. And so because, and this is a good life lesson, careers are long and industries are small. And so whatever relationships you build along the way, make sure that they maintain positive because you never know when you're gonna to wanna to reach back out to them and see if they wanna to work together again. So luckily over the past two decades, I have built really good relationships with a number of people so that when that opportunity came around, I was like, okay, let's bring it to the board. Who wants to be part of this? And I had a lot of people say yes. And that was the way that I, I ultimately secured that seat. Aww. What worries did you have when flying in New Shepard? Oh, um, death <laughs> was one of them. I mean, it's a rocket launch and I have the, you know, the natural human survival instinct. I was just genuinely nervous. It was the riskiest thing mm. I've ever done or will ever do. But I'll tell you, it was also a calculated risk. In the capsule that you fly in, there's an escape system which means if anything were to happen with the explodey part of the rocket, like the bottom part of the rocket, that escape system is enabled and it jettisons you away from the rocket instantly, instantly. So there was like a get out of jail free card, get out of death free card, <laughs> um, if anything were to happen. And so I felt safe just in case the worst case scenario happened, then we would have been okay. Dad, you're the reason I'm here. I love you so much. Yes! <laughs> so, do you have any advice for aspiring girls in STEM like me? Absolutely. My biggest piece of advice is to find other girls in STEM just like you and build those friendships early. The people that I go to constantly in this field are my girlfriends. My girlfriends who do science on YouTube, and then I have another group chat with my girlfriends who are female astronauts. Because oftentimes when you're in this field, you're, you'll experience things that are unique to being a girl in science. And you wanna talk to other girls in science who could give you advice, or you could just vent to that they'll understand, or when you have something to celebrate, that they'll amplify you and lift you up and cheer you on. Now that you've reached your goal to go to space, mm. what is your next biggest goal? Oh my goodness. So my next biggest goal is I've written nine children's books, but I really want to write a book for adults. Oh. And that's that's a little bit scarier. I feel like I, I understand the world of children's science and now I'm dipping my toes into something new. 
which is always fun. I think as you go through your career, you should always be challenging yourself. You should always be a little bit scared about the next hurdle, next challenge. And so anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it, nervous about it, but that's the next big goal. Do you want to do an experiment? I would love to do. Do you want to, do, you want to make something explode? I sure do. Okay. <laughs> so what we are going to do is we are going to put this concentrated hydrogen peroxide into a big jug over there. Now this is different than the regular hydrogen peroxide that you might see at like CBS. This is way more concentrated than that. So we are going to go ahead and put this in and I'm being very careful because it's super duper concentrated. You wanted a big explosion, right? Okay, good. So now we are going to add soap and food coloring. So just do like, like five squirts in there. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Perfect. And now squeeze every last bit of that in here. And while you're doing that, I'm preparing the potassium iodide. This is a super saturated solution, meaning no more potassium iodide will dissolve in this water. Feel that, feel that a little bit. What does it feel? It's cold. It's cold, right? So the act of the potassium iodide dissolving in here is what's called an endothermic chemical mm -hmm. reaction. You might've heard of an exothermic chemical reaction, which is a reaction that creates heat, heat. This is an endothermic chemical reaction, which means it steals heat from its environment and it becomes colder. Are you ready? I'm ready. I think you can do the honors. Oh no. And all you need to do is pour all of this into here and then step back. Um, you don't mind it getting all over your hair and, and body and everywhere, right? I don't mind. You don't mind, yeah, of course. So what's gonna happen is we have hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. And then we have potassium iodide. What that's gonna do when I add this, it's going to remove one of those extra oxygens from H2O2 and turn it into H2O. Now, that would just release a lot of gas. But what else did we add in here other than the food coloring? Soap. The soap. So the soap is gonna trap all of that gas and make bubbles. bubbles. Exactly. Okay, are you ready? I'm worried. <laughs> It's good. It's good to be a little okay. bit worried anytime you do science. Okay, here we go. I think I'm ready. So pour it all the way in, pour everything all the way in, and yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that! This is that so elephant cool. toothpaste. And then here, come here, Macy, look at this. Do you see that seam coming out? Mm -hmm. We saw an endothermic reaction. What do you think this is? An exothermic reaction. An exothermic chemical reaction, a reaction that creates heat. Exactly. So this is just going to keep so much. going and going and going. It's like a little like worm so that just So you said growing. that the hydrogen peroxide could cause skin burns. It can. Would this also burn your no. skin? No. I mean, it's a little bit warm, but no. So now we reacted it and now this is just H2O, soap, and food coloring. Wow. Isn't that cool? That was so fun. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that neat? It's one of my favorite ones to do. Very explosive. Okay, my friends. So, when I went to space, I brought some things with me. And one of my favorite things that I brought was some stars so that I could give star necklaces to little stars here on Earth so that you could have a star that flew in space. And on that star, this is one of them, it has the female symbol engraved on one side, and on the other side, it has the number 100, because I was the 100th woman to fly to space. And I would like to give one of those necklaces to you. Oh, thank you. You're so Can welcome. You? Yes, thank you. I think you are doing such great work, and you're so smart and creative and authentically curious, and I just wanna encourage you to keep going, because you're doing great. Thank you. You're welcome. Twins. Mm -hmm. Maisie Bax. They're brain snacks.